Our next video in our trig unit is coterminal angles. And we say coterminal, right? This prefix co usually means with, and terminal means, of course, where angles stop. So if you remember from our video on drawing angles in standard position, we put our angles in standard position right here. Right Here's our initial ray, and here's our terminal side, or our terminal ray. And that was what we call our angle in standard position. As long as the vertex is on the origin, your initial ray is on the positive x-axis, and your terminal side, or where the angle stops, is, you know, if it's positive, it goes up. If this were a negative angle, it would go down here, and that would be your angle right in there. All right, so coterminal means that angles sort of lie on top of each other. So if I draw another angle here, let's say I draw 40 degrees, and I wanted to draw an angle that is coterminal with that, I would start it in the same way, and I would go maybe around once and then stop at 40 degrees. And those terminal sides sort of lie on top of each other, so that one would be 400 degrees. Those two angles are called coterminal angles. So these are angles that share the same terminal ray or terminal side. They're in standard position. They don't both have to be positive or negative, though. One could be positive, one could be negative, and which we'll get to in a second. So that's what we're talking about today. We're going to try to find angles that are coterminal. And the whole idea where I got this from is the fact that when we go around a full rotation, one full rotation is 360 degrees. All right, that's one revolution or one rotation. In radian land, that's two pi radians. We'll give you one revolution. So that's going to get you all the way around. From here all the way back is 360. From here all the way back is 2 pi. If you want to go negative, it's down this way. Negative 2 pi, negative 360. So we're going to basically be using these two ideas for every single problem. Number one, state if the given angles are coterminal. Well, let's graph them quickly. Might be a good idea to just graph these things first. So. I'll put them on the same coordinate plane. So I've got 170, that is about right here. All right, that's 170 degrees. Negative 190, I'll put in green. Starts at the same spot, negative goes this way, so that's negative 180 and 10 more degrees. Yeah, these are coterminal. These are coterminal. All right, and if you didn't want to graph them, just figure out if there are 360 degrees in between them. In other words, are they 600 uh, excuse me, 360 degrees away from each other? All right, and that answer, of course, is yes. If you think about this kind of on a number line, I guess, we have 190 over here, we have 0 here, and then we have 170 here. All right, the distance there, kind of like the absolute value or, or whatever is, 360 units from here to here. All right, as we know, 360 degrees is a full revolution, so these are coterminal. They stop at the same spot. Moving on, 295 and negative 245. Well, let's draw this one. 295 starts here. It's positive, so it goes 90, 180, 270, and 295. So it's about right there or so. It's 25 degrees past 270. So that's 295. Negative 245. Well, that's going to be, again, same starting position. Negative goes this way. So negative 90, negative 180. This is negative 270. I don't want to go that far. Negative 245. Well, that looks like it's about right here. These are definitely not coterminal. They don't stop at the same spot. 
So his answer would be no. Number three. In terms of radians, all right, I'll draw the first one. We're dealing with 18 as our denominator. So if I think about this as zero radians and two pi radians, well, that's actually 36 pi over 18. This is pi radians or 18 pi over 18. This is pi over two or nine pi over 18. Down here would be 27 pi over 18. All right, it's 18 plus another nine. All right, so these numbers, 23 pi over 18, this is gonna be, let's see, let me start with my initial ray. This is 9 pi over 18, 18 pi over 18. This would be 27. I don't want to go that far. I just want to go somewhere in here. All right, between 18 and 27 is 9. Between 18 and 23, that's 5. So it's about right there, I guess. So that would be 23 pi over 18. And the other one. And I'm not going to necessarily graph all of these, but the other one is going to be, let's see, we're going to go around 9 pi over 18, 18 pi over 18, 27 pi over 18, 36 pi over 18. I need to keep going. I need to go to 59. Oh, boy. So 36 plus another 9 is 45, plus another 9 is 54. So 54 to 59 is 5 pi over 18. And it looks like it does lie on top of the other one. Now, graphing it is not necessary for all of these problems. If you want to just think about this as, all right, is the difference between these 36 pi over 18? All right, that's another way of saying 2 pi. So is the difference between those 2 pi? So all you really need to do is subtract it. All right, 59 minus 23 is that 36. So 59 minus 23. So let's see. I think it is 36. Yeah, that works out really well. So between the two is 2 pi. So a little subtraction goes a long way. Now our denominator is 36. So again, let's set up our Let's set up our 0, 2 pi, but this is in 30, our denominator is 36, so this is 72 over 36. This would be 18 pi over 36. This would be 36 pi over 36. And this would be, I think, 54 pi over 36. It would be 36 plus another 18. So let's graph this one, 43 pi over 36. It's going to be starting here it goes 18 36 it doesn't go all the way to 54 so it's in quadrant 3 somewhere and it looks like it's 7 pi over 36 so probably like right in there somewhere all right negative I'll draw this one in uh, green negative 65 so this would be negative 18 this would be negative 36, this would be negative 54, and this would be negative 72. So I know it's somewhere in here somewhere. So you can see that these are not coterminal. And again, if you didn't want to graph it, just figure out if the difference between these is 2 pi. Well, if our denominator is 36, just figure out if the difference between them is 72 pi over 36. So just take 65 minus 43 and see if that is, is uh, 72. But the negative here kind of throws that off a little bit. So think about in terms of like the you know like a number line like I said earlier. If you plot 40, if you plot negative 65 here and 43 here, that means zero somewhere in here. Is this distance 72? Well, it definitely is not. So this answer is no. So we're confirming it algebraically as well. I guess not really algebraically, just with a little arithmetic. 
All right, I'm going to give you an angle here, and I'm going to ask you for a positive and a negative coterminal. So let's get a general idea of where this thing is. This would be 30 pi over 30. This would be 15 pi over 30. So 13 pi over 30 is somewhere up there. So there's our theta. Now, a coterminal angle with that is basically just going to go around 360 degrees or 2 pi. So we're going to add 2 pi to that. So let's do that. So let's add 2 pi. So let me take 13 pi over 30 plus 2 pi. But 2 pi can be translated into 60 pi over 30. So this answer will be 73 pi over 30. 73 pi over 30 would look like this. It would start here. It would go 60 pi over 30 plus another 13 pi over 30. That would be 73 pi over 30. So that's a positive coterminal angle. To get the negative one, you just, of course, subtract. So we're going to want to go 13 minus 60. And I get negative 47 pi over 30. All right, and we can just kind of get an idea of what that looks like graphically. So this would be negative 15, negative 30, negative 45, and then two more. And that makes sense. Because the original distance between 15 and 13 was 2 pi over 30, or pi over 15. So this distance is is consistent. So there's my negative answer. Here's my positive. So all three of these angles are coterminal. They all end at the same spot. All right, negative 230. Let's give a quick graph for this one. Negative 230 would be, let's see, this would be negative 180. So plus another 50 is up in here, quadrant 2. So that's negative 230. Let's go ahead and just think about this as adding 360 or subtracting 360. So let's go ahead and add 360 to it. So 360 plus negative 230. We're going to subtract those. So we get 130. So 130 degrees starts here, goes to 90, and goes an extra 40 degrees. So that's code terminal. If we go negative 230 minus 360, so we're kind of going around again in the clockwise direction. So now we're adding those two together, and we get 590, but it's negative 590. So these three angles right here are coterminal to each other. Negative 590 would look like this, negative 360 plus another 230. One more. All right, so here we go. We have 420. So it starts right here. It's positive, so it goes this way, 180, 360. 360 plus another 90 would be, let's see, 360 plus another 90. That would be 450. This one doesn't go quite that far. doesn't go quite that far, so it's going to be somewhere up in there, I would say. So we want to figure out an angle that is coterminal to it. So just go around one rotation. But in this case, we're looking for a positive coterminal angle and it might be tempting to say, okay, let's just add 360 to that. If we add 360 to get to that, we get 780 degrees. And that certainly would be coterminal. It would go around twice and then end right here. It would definitely be coterminal, but you always want to think about the smallest possible positive coterminal angle. And to get that in this case, since the original one is over 360, let's subtract 360. If we subtract 360, we're still left with a positive angle. This right here, it's kind of like our reference angle, right? That's 60 degrees. And that would be coterminal to 420. If we take 420 and take 360 away from it twice, in other words, we take 720 away from it. 
All right, now we're going to get into the negative angles. All right, so if we think about 60 degrees minus another 360, right, we've got ourselves negative 300 degrees. And I'll put that in red. That would start this way. Go negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and then 30 more degrees. So it would lie right on top of 420. So be careful. Sometimes the positive answer, the best positive answer, you might have to get there by subtracting first, depending on if your original angle is already greater than 360. So there you go. It's a little bit longer video than I, than I thought it was going to be, but uh, I think it's a pretty important skill. Uh, and it just comes back to this idea of 360 degrees and two pi radians being one revolution around a circle. So I hope that helped, and uh, thank you for watching.